down the road from Santa Barbara. I'd like to welcome everybody to our monthly birdie bagel brunch. This is all about squawking and talking. Jamie McLeod hosts a monthly ritual. Birds of a feather, parrots of all kinds, get to flock together, while humans get to preen Damn it, I'm to the back for the occasion. and play. Right, you want to go skydiving? You do? All right, you ready? Woo! Here we go! Woo! And commiserate. She's just a really sensitive bird. She just gets very hormon hormonal and very tense and stressed. Keeping her happy would take, you know, maybe four people all of their waking hours. It's a kind of group therapy for parrot people. Here, they learn things they never heard at the pet shop. Jamie McLeod. Hi! People are very attracted to these beautiful creatures that are very, some of them talk. Some of them sing, some of them are very snuggly and cuddly. But in reality, living with them is another whole story. These creatures are not domesticated. It's a story Mira Tweedy, yes, her real name, knows all too well. But, but what Everyone says, oh, animals are unconditionally loving. Parrots are not unconditionally loving. They have plenty of conditions. Tweedy should know. You know basically, I've had a parrot in my life for the better part of 15 years. She has written a book about the often difficult, even unnatural relationship between parrots and people. There are an estimated 40 million parrots in U.S. households, not far behind cats and dogs in popularity. The average parrot has the intelligence of a three to five-year-old child. At the same time, they have the emotional maturity of a two-year-old. Tweety and her lorikeet, Zazu, are inseparable. Can I have a kiss? Not because yes. Tweety wants it that way, because Zazu demands it. He's a huge amount of work. A lot of the time, I don't have time for it. Time measured in decades. They can live to 80. 80 years? Yeah, they live human lifetimes. A lifetime of hand-prepared food. She has parrot-proofed her apartment and wears a protective outer shirt. Zazu can poop five times in five minutes. So it's a full-time job. I mean, I've got towels on the floor. I've got towels covering all my furniture on the inside because I have to. Outside, she's turned her deck into an aviary and still... A parrot will bite the hand that feeds it for as long as it lives. And they truly do. You've oh. been bitten? Oh, yeah. I have a bite right here. They're loud. They love to chew, and what you've got is a three-year-old child running around with a can opener on its face. But one who has a megaphone. Nancy Schroeder got her cockatoo, Peaches, to fill the empty nest after her daughters went to college. You have to really dedicate your time and, and energy to making that parrot um, happy, entertained. Peaches gets the royal treatment. Pool, shower, spa. See, she loves the blow dryer. And I think that's her yearning for that feeling of flying across open forest. Pampered, but still demanding. If Peaches feels she's not getting the proper attention. The screaming is unbearable. We have people stopping outside, walking by the house, and they'll stop thinking someone's being murdered in the house. These are long-lived animals that are designed to live in flocks. They're more social than we are. I mean, the average person would like to have some alone time. Average parrot doesn't want it. Someone with less understanding than I have is putting that parrot in a closet, is locking that parrot away, is putting it in a garage, throwing food at it, and forgetting about it. Which happens often. Isolated in a cage, these intelligent flock birds go stir crazy, mutilate themselves, pluck out their feathers like this one did. It's all too much for many people. Declining in their natural tropical habitats, flocks of parrots are multiplying here in North America. An estimated 30,000 flying around cities from California to Brooklyn, set loose by frustrated owners. Growing even faster, parrot rescue centers like this one in LA's San Fernando Valley. You'll find them now in every state and almost every city. And most rescue centers, like this one at a Buddhist monastery in Poolsville, Maryland, are full to overflowing. Jet Sunma Akan Lamo is the temple's spiritual director. We have many, many requests 
so many people realize they've, they've uh, taken on too much. And so we got a lot of requests, but um, sadly we're not able to fulfill them. It's such a big problem, the Humane Society now recommends that unwanted birds be euthanized as last resort. Because of the growing demands of her job... I've had less time to spend with him, which has made him more nervous. Kara Helgeson can't meet Murphy's demands anymore. He's become a feather plucker due to nerves, um, so that's why he has that collar on there. So He's been in her life for 19 years. It's become unmanageable for me because I wake up, you know, to screaming. He screams all day long. The only time he doesn't scream is when I'm holding him. So reluctantly, she sought a shelter to take him in. But he's going to go play with other birds. Giving him up is unbearable. Okay. Bye, Murphy. I love you. I love you. I always will. Keeping him impossible. I am going to miss Murphy so much. You don't even know. A tug between love, love and exasperation that almost all parrot people experience. I had no idea how much work, time, dedication. Basically, I don't have much of a life. I don't go on vacation. I have six birds in my home, um, and I wouldn't trade any of them for the world. A parrot would never leave you. That's right. You'll never leave, right? Mira Tweedy right? promised to care for Zazu when some friends couldn't bear it any longer. Do I understand how the average person can be driven by an incessantly screaming bird? You know, driven to the point where they can't take it anymore? Absolutely. Every day, at some point, I think to myself, I can't take it another minute. And every few minutes, someone else is buying another parrot and taking it home. 